Hello everybody. Hello, hello. Hello. Hello everybody. Well, this is Mattia and you're actually now you're watching uh, International Virtual Studio, which is a very uh, interesting project uh, and pow powered by the University of Siena which aims to, you know, share a few stories, anecdotes and, you know, uh, knowledge about a wide range of topics which are all, all relevant to the actual coronavirus crisis that we are all facing right now as, as humankind. Um, so, uh, right now we are very pleased to have a bunch of, of guests who are all very, you know, um, versatile and which are pleased to take part in our small project. Uh, so today there's this very special guest that we're, you know, expecting right now. And let me check. Is she here? Oh, good God. Uh, yes, she is. Hello, everybody, by the way. We're so pleased you're here. So, um, while we're waiting, hi, I wonder, Dottorato, for the biochemistry. You can now see her. No, you can't. Where is she? Um, Right now, I'm keeping you in suspense because you still don't know who she is. And there we are. Oh, okay. 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 Nice to see you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can you? Yes, you people yes, yes. And the public. Can you, you audience? Oh, by the way, let's not forget to ask you guys. Uh, should you have any kind of questions? please do ask them. You can ask them in, in the small box, which is below. Is the volume a bit low? Is it my volume a bit low? I'm sorry, I'm trying to speak here right now. So, but hello. Okay. <laughs> I still haven't told our lovely audience who you are. You are uh, Professor uh, Chiara Mocenni, Associate Professor of Mathematics, am I right? Yes, I, I teach two engineers and mathematicians. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm, I'm, I have a background in mathematics, but I usually work with engineers mm -hmm. at the engineering department of the University of Siena. And so I'm somehow both uh, okay. engineer and mathematician. Oh, good. So you are as versatile as I said before. Then um, the yeah. title of your... Uh, Let's call it lecture, but it's more of a warm conversation. But anyway, uh, it's self-regulation and social influence for cooperation. So, yes, cooperation, yes. maths, that's kind of weird for people like me who are not keen on mathematics or know nothing about it. So, please, uh, show us this whole new world of mathematics, cooperation, self-regulation, what's all about Okay, um, cooperation is not a mathematical concept, mm -hmm. as you can imagine. Cooperation is important for all of us when we behave in a society, mm -hmm. when we behave in any place where other people are uh, together as and are uh, somehow um, asked to safeguard some common goods. So cooperation is acting as a driver mm -hmm. for uh, all our decisions uh, that are aimed to uh, somehow um, uh, prevent that common goods are discarded. Uh, for example, social health mm -hmm. is a good example requiring cooperation and also environment uh, safeguard is also very uh, important. E cooperation is very important in the safeguard of environment, for example. So uh, the mathematics will come later. Uh, I will try to start by motivating my study yeah. 
Uh, that has been uh, recently published uh, in jointly with a colleague, which is Dario Madeo. And uh, so there is a big debate in the mathematical uh, fields about cooperation. Mm -hmm. And this is motivated by the fact that uh, uh, usually people are struggling between taking decisions, ensuring their own reward, or acting for social interest. And um, I think that we are in, in this moment, we are living a situation where this is very, very true, yes, I, uh, maximally true. And so the point is that uh, the maximum of the common goods can be achieved when all people contribute cooperatively to it. So we must be uh, socially cooperative. So cooperation is not uh, a decision of individuals as uh, separate people, but it's a problem of a society. And moreover, uh, selfish behavior prevents collective good to be obtained correctly. And so uh, the point is that, for example, in this time of where coronavirus is uh, spreading all over the world, uh, we can follow uh, the rules that governments are uh, asking us to uh, to promote for example stay at home yeah. uh, social distancing or for example buy little amount of food uh, when going to the supermarket instead of uh, panic buying yeah. so we are uh, every day under the um, controversial decisions um, between being selfish or being able to uh, promote uh, common good conservation and preservation. Yes, um, uh, I think I'm speaking please. for everybody in here, but when does maths kick in in this, uh, in this field, which is, it has to do with common sense. So is there a way to yeah. mathematically uh, demonstrate that common good and common sense are actually a thing. Okay, there is a theory which is grounded on mathematics, which is game theory. And game theory was born uh, not many years ago by means of John Nash, that maybe all of you know. Um, and this theory has been developed to describe the decisions of people, mm -hmm. how people take decisions. But under game theory, there is a strong assumption. And the strong assumption is that people are uh, rational. Yeah. So they are always aimed at maximizing their own payoff. Mm -hmm. So the mathematics, I will say, is in the word maximization. Okay. Uh, if I have, uh, I'm, I'm able to use mathematical tools to maximize some functions that represent our payoffs. Yeah our utilities, our rewards, okay? So the mathematics is the methodology under which we can solve the problems of taking the decisions uh -huh. for individuals. And game theory is very important because the decisions of people under the game theory are uh, related to the decisions of other people. Yeah. So it, it's a field where the interaction among people is very important and is at the basis. Yeah. The problem is that according to game theory, it may happen that sometimes some dilemmas happen. For example, uh, there is a very famous uh, dilemma in game theory, which is called the, the prisoner's dilemma game, where we using our rationality, we will always converge to a decision which is the decision of defecting, being defective, while on the contrary, being cooperative will pro produce a higher payoff. Uh -huh. So the dilemma is that being cooperative is providing a higher payoff, but under the hypothesis of rationality, we at the end, eventually will choose to be defective. Mm -hmm. So the mathematics enters in the way that people are taking the decisions, but unfortunately, this mathematics, 
that have been also extensively used in the economics is not able to account for cooperation. Hmm. Okay, so there is uh, a, a, a limit. Hmm. There is a limit under the assumption of rationality that prevents people to behave cooperatively in a social context. Okay. And so this problem is extensively studied in the literature. Even actually is one of the most important themes hmm. in the research, the scientific research in the mathematical field and also in the social sciences, and also I would say in social psychology, uh -huh. because the way that people take decisions is also uh, studied by social psychology. Why people usually defect? Yeah. What is the interpretation of this concept of game theory from a social psychological yeah. point of view? That seems to me a uh, people... vibrant and engaging aspect of mathematics and sociology, isn't it? It's more, you know, yes, relevant to everyday life. Yeah, well, this is my, I would say, just to make a parenthesis, yeah. that I, I think my, my work is devoted to apply uh, mathematical theory and mathematical tools to explain a real fact mm -hmm. and real phenomena, okay? So I'm not that kind of mathematician or engineer which works in a a separate room uh, from real life, okay? I don't like, the, I, I uh, prefer to be seen as an artisan uh, like that, that tries to, like that. Try to uh, explain uh, what happens all around us, okay? So uh, I'm interested more in the interpretation of the results more than in the theory itself, okay? So why people to be back? Why people defect? People defect essentially for two reasons that are well represented in the game theory mm -hmm. and well interpreted in a real life. One reason is the greed, is the compulsion. When we look for some goods, uh, being not able at all to concern with the presence of other people. Mm -hmm. We are seeking for something just for benefiting ourselves. Mm -hmm. This is the one reason. And the other reason is the fear. Suppose that you are an individual that may wish to act in a socially responsible way, but you are afraid that the, all the other people will not. Mm -hmm. So this fear may push even well-concerned people to behave selfishly. Yeah. So uh, selfish behavior may induce selfish behavior in other people, in the other people. So these two facts that are well recognized in social psychology are also very well accounted in the game theory. So the point now is how can we solve this dilemma? Yeah. Can we try to uh, push uh, into the mathematical models any uh, methodology, any fact, any factor, any, I would say, variable that will be able to reverse mm -hmm. this selfish behavior into cooperative one. Okay. So in my work, I have done those uh, facts that I will try to explain, okay, in a in a moment. The first uh, step is to introduce a time. Okay. So uh, we don't, we are not, I'm not interested in uh, games that are played once, mm -hmm. one shot games. Okay. I'm more interested in repeated games. Because when you are able to repeat games and what you are able to play games with many people, you can learn from the results of the game. Okay. Why? If you are allowed to play only once, you will not learn anything, or at least you are, we will not be able to uh, apply the results of the game in a second round. So the second fact we have introduced is the network of connections. Mm -hmm. So our individuals in the society are not are not uh, separate people 
playing two by two games, but they are included in a network. Okay. Uh, imagine, for example, a social network that we are now using where people are connected explicitly through a friendship uh, mechanism or even through parental mechanism or other kind of uh, neighboring, uh -huh. a neighboring mechanism. So in this way, uh, we know who are the other people to which we are playing against. So uh, we are not uh, individual, uh, not identifiable in the society. We have a specific name and color and we are characterized by ex uh, essentially by our personality in a, a unique way. So uh, the second time over, ta over introducing, the second things we have done uh, besides introducing times in games, evolution of uh, the dynamics, we have introduced the, the network. Okay. And then we have done a third, a third change uh, to game theory. And the third change is the introduction of a factor, of a new factor, which is a specific game, which is called a self game, <coughs> sorry, okay. which consists with adding uh, some kind of inertia to the uh, basic mechanism of selfish uh -huh. uh, behavior. We introduce a self-regulating parameter that we call exactly awareness parameter. So we try to introduce in our mathematical model the awareness, which is essentially an internal mechanism. Uh -huh. And this awareness, when we are going to take a decision, comes from, I would say, knowledge. Okay. Comes from uh, being in touch, being in contact with the other people, and being able to learn from uh, the social context and also from ourselves. Mm -hmm. So when we introduce this term, we are able to show mathematically, I would say now, and that cooperation is possible. Oh. But time is necessary. Okay. Because indeed we are um, balancing the selfish mechanism that is grounded in game theory yep. that we have said before, together with this new factor which is able to uh, limit the selfishness. Mm -hmm. And this factor is not due to any kind of punishment, mm -hmm. is not due to any kind of, I would say, uh, reduction of the payoff mm -hmm. in the game, is not due to uh, adding some cost. Mm -hmm. It's not a cost. Uh, sometimes it costs, but the cost is not a monetary, mm -hmm. is not included into the games in the sense that it is reducing the gains, it's reducing the uh, rewards. It's just a completely different nature mechanism, yeah. which is internal. Oh. So uh, uh, by uh, joining the uh, traditional game theory together with these new factors, which is repeating games with the people and repeating games with connected people <coughs> and being aware on the connections that we are uh, immersed in, embedded in, mm -hmm. uh, we are able to develop mm -hmm. some mechanisms that are able to counteract with the selfishness okay. and learn and learn to behave cooperatively okay. in a spontaneous way. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. So can we apply all of that to the, uh, the situation we're living in right now? <coughs> okay. Uh, the reason for which I'm very um, proud of our uh, study mm -hmm is that actually the coronavirus situation that we are living now is very, very good examples of the results we get in our paper. Uh -huh. 
I would say that we show, we show mathematically that a punishment based cooperation is not the solution. Sure. Uh, hard punishment, as well as I would say centralized monitoring, are not the right way to make people able to follow the beneficial guidelines. Right. <laughs> I would say that uh, punishment based cooperation will not produce learning in the population it will not produce uh, it not it will not produce the cooperation to be uh, embedded in the cultural heritage mm -hmm. of the country on the other hand on the other hand we show that extensive testing uh, honest reporting mm -hmm. and well informed public is more easily cooperative. So when people are told the scientific facts, for example, the information we got from our uh, uh, scientists in the occasion of coronavirus, uh, when people are told, are told correctly about the scientific facts, and when people trust public authorities, and when people trust and are also able to understand the scientific facts that are told to them, then the citizens will do the right thing, hmm. even without having like a big brother yeah, well, uh, yeah. under under their shoulders. Okay, okay? so uh, they will be able to cooperate, mm -hmm. but under a self-motivated behavior. Okay, so and. Uh... Just, you know, to sum up and to make things clear for everybody. Uh, so we're saying that a well-informed citizen rather than a well-fined citizen is more uh, probable to uh, act uh, responsibly, uh, correctly, or am I still, you know, stumbling in the dark? Yes, okay. yes. I Yes, I'm very uh, convinced about that. And moreover, I will say, I, I can add something to that. Mm. So um, I will think that according to our theory, I strongly think that, for example, the coronavirus experience mm -hmm. will become part uh, will become part of the culture of the population at global level. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that we will be able, more able, to deal with a new situation, a new similar situation, with with a more powerful. Um, knowledge. Yeah. So I think that empowering people is the great effort that governments must do. And I will say more that even the governments may be uh, under the uh, same um, drivers. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, uh, if you think at a higher level, the connections among people may be also seen at the level of the government. government. So the same model will apply to governments themselves. And so the cooperation between among all governments, I would say all governments in the world in this time, will be a prerequisite for solving the problem and dealing with a higher uh, situation, a similar situation. Uh, but I will say more, uh, if I can add something even more. This, these ideas will apply to our lives mm -hmm. also. So it's a multiple scale fact, okay? Uh, we have to be aware, I think, that we are able to change things. Mm -hmm. So the behavior of any single person is important. Yeah. We are very, very small compared to the uh, ensemble of all people but our in the world. Any tiny contribution can make a world of a difference. Exactly. Because we act and we can influence our neighbors mm -hmm. and this influence may be propagated and according to the complexity theory that i'm also studying 
this will and the nonlinearity uh -huh. of the changes, a small and a tiny change in our behavior will be able to become a very big and change everything. Okay. Okay. So uh, uh, my 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 message, a uh, very important message, is that uh, even if we are made by two different parts of our personality, selfish and altruistic, yeah. or uh, we are able to balance these two parts mm -hmm. and be cooperative when this cooper cooperation is necessary for our safeguard, okay. for our life. That's very important. Yeah. It is. So, uh, thank you. No, you, really, you do have quite some time. Um, so, uh, it all has to do with self-regulation, which is, I guess, a key skill in this uh, kind of atmosphere in this kind of situation. So uh, people who are self-regulated are even more uh, self-confident and more resourceful, I guess, when embarking a new task, like, you know, in this case, staying at home, when, you know, the pandemic is spreading all over the world. Yes, I think that we must work, all of us, all of us, must work and their or their selves in order to become more aware uh -huh. and more uh, able to read the uh, information and more open to new knowledge, even scientific. Yeah, because all people are, I think, able to understand scientific facts uh -huh. uh, if if they are. Um, explained uh, in a in a well way in a correct way and easable and understandable way so uh, i think that we have uh, make our efforts to be more um, self-regulated but self-regulation is nothing to do with be afraid yeah is us to do with be yes. informed i see Correctly, mm -hmm. okay, and be uh, be uh, and feel our power, and and being able to feel that we are very powerful mm -hmm. uh, in all sense. Yeah, but in this case, I think that there is even a, a huge effort that has to be made by uh, you know scientists in order to uh, you know provide more. Um, usable information, pieces of information, uh, in order to get everybody to understand what's really at stake. So not just, you know, talking in this weird uh, echo chamber where everybody has the same opinion and the same set of knowledge, but, you know, reaching out to people. Yes, we are in our paper. I didn't have the time to talk of, about everything, but we also showed that small groups are more cooperative. So the idea of what you are saying, echo chambers, where all people having the same opinion are uh, meeting and uh, staying somehow close, yeah. is not the good way to behave cooperatively. Okay, we must promote the um, interaction among people that think differently, and even small groups of uh, discussions is more is more effective. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah, to exit from. Well, right now we're uh, sadly running out of time. So, uh, Rafa Bix, yeah, asks, can you suggest some bibliography? Find this very topic very interesting. So. Uh, please, <laughs> shall you? Oh, okay. About cooperation, I think there is uh, a good way by Martin Novak, mm -hmm. but it's a um, kind of technical okay. uh, book. So, uh, so uh, anyway, Martin Novak, I will repeat his name. Uh, Martin Novak is one of the most important scientists working in cooperation. Okay. Uh, secondly, People can read my paper. <laughs> this is just a joke. No, no, absolutely. But anyway, it's just uh, been published uh, 20 days ago. Oh. But to, for more... Uh, 
Congratulations. Uh, Thank you. And for more, um, I would say, uh, interesting lectures, I will suggest uh, a recent book by Carlo Rovelli. Mm -hmm. uh, the, this is a book in Italian, and um, the title is so Ci sono luoghi al mondo dove più che le regole è importante la gentilezza. And I find this book very, very similar to my uh, ideas, to the ideas that I'm trying to uh, promote in, the, in my work. And then I will suggest a reading by Jan Stewart, uh, Does God Play Dice? Mm -hmm. This is uh, the new a book about, very, very simple book, uh, not at all technical, but it's about the new mathematics of chaos. So uh, Ian Stewart is trying to explain uh, why, uh, why God is playing dice somehow contrary to what the famous scientist uh, Einstein said that, that uh, God doesn't play dice. So is the, the theme here is about uncertainty. So we must deal with uncertainty in our lives, okay? So we must be enough aware and self-regulated in order to be able to uh, respond to uncertainty, yeah. okay? So this is very important because uncertainty is the source of creativity and is the source of change. And uh, uh, I will also suggest a, a, a reading by Italo Calvino and uh, the book uh, that I suggest, all books of by Italo Calvino, of course, are all uh, in embed some science uh, uh, principles. So, but in particular, I will say to that Palomar is a nice book to be read because uh, in in it there is a good representation of what a a people, a person who is interested into the science can be uh, able to make science and to pose very important questions that are very similar to what a scientist also ask it to themselves. Okay. And also it produces a, critics, a criticism to the scientists that are convinced that science has the response to everything. Right. Because the uncertainty I have mentioned before is also in science. Yes. Science is completely embedded into the uncertainty. And so uh, this is an invitation to all of us, scientists, politicians, and citizens, to be aware that uncertainty is something that we have to deal with. Okay. Well, then, thank you. I love your approach. I, yes, thank you. And so that, that's it for, for now. See you uh, soon, everybody. Uh, thank you for watching our small episode. And thank you, Professor. And see you soon on Wednesdays, on Thursday, sorry, for uh, International Virtual Studio and every single given day for a, our, you know, Italian uh, Virtual Studio. So, uh, goodbye. Okay. And good Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much to all. Bye. Bye, Matteo. Bye.